The question says the figure below shows two metal plates of the same dimension soldered together, metal plate one, metal plate two, and it goes on to say the thickness of each plate is L1 is equal to L2, which is equal to 3 times 10 to the power negative 3, and metal plate one is at 100 degrees Celsius, while metal plate two is at 0 degrees Celsius. The surface area of metal plate one has dimensions 4 centimeters times 2 centimeters, given that the thermal conductivity of metal plate 1 is 48.1 um, watts per meter per Kelvin, and that of plate 2 is 68.2 watts per meter per Kelvin. What is the temperature of the soldered interface if there is a steady flow of heat from metal plate 1 to metal plate 2? So this is the question that we're going to answer in this video. So here the data being given is the thickness, which is L1, is equal to the thickness, which is L2, which is equal to 3 times 10 to the power negative 3. Then the area is given by these dimensions. If you want to convert to meter uh, to, to square meters, we use this conversion factor. And this one, which is the thermal conductivity one, is equal to 48.1 watts per meter per Kelvin. And thermal conductivity number two or thermal conductivity for metal plate two is 6.8. Um, 6, 8.2 watts per meter per Kelvin. Then the temperature one, metal plate one is at 100 degrees Celsius and metal plate two is at um, zero degrees Celsius. Then we are told to find the temperature of the soldered interface. So when an object or when the two blocks or two metal plates reach the thermal equilibrium, what is going to result is the temperature that we need. So here what we're going to do is we're going to make some assumptions to say this is, this is the 100 degree, 100 degrees Celsius, and the temperature is moving from this um, this metal plate, which is at 100 degrees Celsius, to the metal plate, which is at zero degrees Celsius. So the temperature, this temperature, will be higher than the temperature of the equilibrium that is going to be attained, and this one is going to be less than the temperature that we are going to find because zero. Um, this is zero, so the temperature must be greater than this. So meaning, this T2 must be less than the temperature. This one, which will be bigger than this, because the temperature we're expecting to find here lies between zero and 100 degrees Celsius. So let's proceed. Okay, so we know that the rate, the rate at which the energy flows is given by is equal to, since this is K1, or this is uh, for, um, we have two plates, we're going to consider two equations for metal plate one and metal plate two. So for metal plate one, we're going to say the rate, the energy rate, or the energy, the rate at which the energy flows is equal to conductivity constant, or rather the thermal conductivity one, the thermal conductivity, which is K1, times area 1 is equal to the temperature, which is T1, it is bigger than the final temperature, over the thickness, which is L1. So let us call this equation number 1. And for metal plate 2, since that is where the temperature is going, it is at 0 degrees Celsius now, that is where the heat is flowing, uh, that is the, the direction, or rather it is being directed to metal plate number two. So meaning, the temperature that we're going to have as the final is going to be bigger, uh, is going to be bigger than, um, than, than zero, as I said. So for this, let us call this for the heat rate in metal plate number one. Then metal plate number two, it is going to be, so the rate is going to be this one, and we are going to have K2, A2, then, since the temperature will be bigger, it will be bigger than zero or bigger than the, the initial temperature here, we are going to have T2, T minus T2 over L2. So let's call this equation number two. Okay, so since this equation is equal to this equation, and considering the fact that we've been told to say this L1 and L2 are, are, same, are the same, and um, A1 and A2 are the same, let us equate equations one and equation two.
So equation number one and equation number two, we have. So equation one is equal to equation two. So here we're going to say K1, A1, T1, minus T over L1 is equal to K2, A2, T minus T2 over L2. Now, since A1 and A2 are the same, this and this can cancel, and this one and this one will cancel because L1 and L2 are the same. So, the equation that we're going to remain with is So this is the equation that we have. Now, we just need to work with these equations to find the final temperature. So from here, it is just a matter of plugging in the values that we have. The value for this that we've been given is, uh, for thermal conductivity one, we have 48.1 uh, watts per meter per Kelvin times this, the temperature one, the temperature one, it is at 100 degrees Celsius. So 100 degrees Celsius, if we convert to Kelvin, uh, we are going to add to 73.15 as a conversion factor. So the temperature in um, Kelvin, we are going to say the degrees Celsius temperature plus 273, and we are going to get 373.15 minus the T here, which we, do, which we don't know, it's the one that we are looking for. And the thermal conductivity too is... 68.2 watts per meter per Kelvin times the temperature here minus zero degrees Celsius. So if we convert that to Kelvin, we are going to have 273.15. So this is Kelvin, and also this is this is Kelvin. So from here, what we're going to do is we just need to make T the subject, the subject of the formula, or rather we need to come up with T. So we are going to multiply this times this. What we are going to get is 1794.8.5 minus this times this. Okay, this times this, it is the one that is going to give us a minus. So it will be 48.1 T is equal to. So this times this, we are going to get 68.2 T minus this times this, we are going to get 1862.88.86. So this one now, we can collect the light terms. So here, this one, when it comes this side, we are going to have 48 plus 68 is equal to and when this one comes this side, we are going to have 17, 948.5 plus 18.6288.86. So this one, we are going to have 48.1 plus 68.2. What we are going to get here is 116.5. Which will give us this plus this, we are going to have 36577.39. So if we more, if we if we now divide it through by this 16.3, even here, 116.3. What I'm going to get is this and this will cancel. The temperature will be 314.5 Kelvin. So this temperature can also be converted back to degrees Celsius by just using Tc is equal to Tk minus 373.15. So here, you see? So here the TK, the temperature in Kelvin, 314.5 minus, okay, so this must be 275, 273, sorry, 273.15, then minus 
3.273.158. So what we're going to get to get when we subtract this from this, we're going to get 314.5 minus 273.15, we're going to get 41.35. And this can also be rounded off to 41.0 degrees Celsius.